Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome to another review of movies from the last 100 years. Tonight I'm talking about an R-rated uh, action thriller from 1993 called Judgment Night. Yeah, this is a very underrated movie. I know Jacquez uh, recommended this movie on Facebook. I did see it a couple days ago. I do like this film. It's a lot of fun. It's directed by a really good director, uh, Stephen Hopkins. He did one of the bad Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. Uh, I think he did part five. But he also did Predator 2, which is one of the best underrated sequels in that franchise. It's the only good sequel in that franchise. It's better than Predators and The Predator. It's got a hell of a cast, too. You got Emilio Estevez, Cuba Gooding Jr. This is one of the few good movies he did before he won his Oscar. Jeremy Piven, Stephen Dorff, and Dennis Leary as the villain. The... He's a, he's a leader of a group of, of friends. Run, uh, th th this is the, the synopsis. These got three guys are on a, uh, a group of friends who are on the run from a gang of drug dealers, played by Dennis Leary. He's the lead leader of the drug dealers. After they witness a murder, yeah, that they kill a guy uh, in cold blood in the middle of the street. Uh, and the film has a lot of tension. Like, these guys are in a van, they're on a road trip, and they're going to go somewhere. And, you know, Jeremy Piven's like, I got to do something. And then they're in the middle of the shootout, and it's just crazy. Like, the movie's really, really over... It's dramatic, but it's not too long either. It's like an hour and 49 minutes. Without the end credits, it's like an hour and 45 minutes. It's not too long. And this movie bombed. I don't know why. Why did this movie bomb? The Taken sequels made money, and this bombed. It came out in October of 93. I don't get why, what the problem was, because the movie is very entertaining, Got a really good cast. Emilio Estevez is very likable in the movie as a Frank Wyatt. He's a family man going with his brother and two friends to a boxing match. Yeah, and then they get a, the detour that you know almost cost them their lives, and uh, they all get messed up. But it, it's crazy because in this movie, Stephen Dorff he looks like he's like like eighteen years old. He looks really young in this movie, and um, also the Cuban Gunny Jr. And the film is very very violent. Like you know, it's not for kids. There's a lot of blood. There's a lot of shootouts. People get hurt. There's explosions like that will make Michael Bay cream his pants. Yeah, I will say this. There is no female lead in this movie. That's kind of a, I guess, a little bit of a letdown. There's a woman in it, but it's not. she's not in the film that much. You have um, Christine Harnos as Linda, Frank's wife and John's sister-in-law. She's barely in the movie. She's like in a few scenes. And I think it's underrated. Like, this movie did not deserve to bomb. It's not a terrible movie. I think it's a hidden gem. It looks great. Stephen Hopkins does some really good shots of the city uh, where these guys are, you know, driving through in the trailer. Uh, it's all practical. There's no CGI in this movie that I can think of. It's, you know, got a really good budget, really good cast, and it's tension-filled. Like, I was really getting invested in the story. This is what they said. Audiences scored it a B. And yeah, and I Rotten Tomatoes, fuck Rotten Tomatoes, thirty five percent. It's this movie is not as bad as as Dark Phoenix. It's way better. It's R rated, which is what Dark Phoenix should have been. It has tension, so you know that something big is going to go down at the end. It's got really good actors in the roles. Uh, there's there's f bombs galore. It is not for kids. It ho it has a lot of stakes, and you know, it's look, look what this uh, Leonard Cl Clady said of Variety. The most chilling aspect of the urban thrill, the Judgment Night, is how in infinitely superior its craft to its to its art. This is an exceedingly well directed, cleverly filmed, and edited, tension filled affair. Yes, it is. And this is not a horror movie, but I feel the tension when you when you're trapped inside of a vehicle and people are shooting at you and you there's nowhere to run. That's a very very tense moment. And the film has a really good soundtrack. Uh, who who did the soundtrack? You have um. There were some good songs in it. You have a uh, fr freeway conf confrontation. You have new passenger execution, train yard, Batwoman. But this is before that horrible show that's coming out. Hello, ladies. Ray's deal. Ray eats it. Yeah, there's some really good songs in the movie, and and the film. It, it should have been, you know, it could have done a lot better if it was marketed better. I never saw a trailer for this movie back in '93. And uh, I think it's underrated. Like, it's well-written for the most part. It's fast-paced. It doesn't take an hour for something to happen. Uh, Alan Silvestri's score is fantastic. I love that man's uh, composing. He's like the John 
Williams of, of the of the 80s and the 90s because I love Back to the Future. I love his score for the Avengers. I love his score for this movie is really good. I like I think he did the score for Predator 2. He's 69 years old. Yeah, let me see his uh the the things that he did. No, not in the 70s. Uh yeah, Back to the Future, Summer Rental. He did a uh, Flight of the Navigator, Mac and Me, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I love that freaking music. My sister is stepmother is an alien. Uh, Back to the Future two and three, but yeah, he did Predator two. Back to the Future of the Ride, Soap Dish, Father of the Bride, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, Fern Gully. Yeah, the guy has some brilliant music. Like he makes me feel something in every score, especially in Endgame. When I heard that score, I had chills in the theater, and that's how I got it with this movie. He did The Bodyguard. He did Sidekicks, he did Cop and a Half, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, he did uh, Forrest Gump, Richie Rich. Yeah, the guy really does. He has some some hits and misses, you know, but he's a really good... Uh, and I think Stephen Hopkins deserves uh, some credit for this movie. It's a better movie uh, action thriller than some of the action thrillers we get today. It doesn't have CGI blood. It doesn't have bad actors from that are foreign. It doesn't have shitty actresses that are, you know in the way that get thrown in there, like Vanessa Kirby and Fallout. No, it has a plot. It sticks with it. It doesn't go in 10 different directions. It's not two and a half hours long, so you're not, it's not a drag. And it looks great. The, the film is shot very well. And the ending is perfect. Like, the guys, he beats Dennis Leary up, and he's like, don't call me... What What is he said? Don't call me Francis. Yeah, I love that. That would have been a line in Deadpool, the first Deadpool. Yeah, and he, he kills Dennis Leary, throws him off a freaking, you know... I think like a scaffolding or whatever, and uh, and him and his friends get out, uh, you know, alive. They're in. They go to the hospital because two of them get shot. So it's pretty intense. I would say this movie, if this was not in in, in late October of of, of nineteen ninety three, it would have done a lot better in the summer. I know that was a big year for Jurassic Park, but this and Last Action Hero did not deserve to flop. It, they're underrated. They have a lot of entertainment value for me. And I think that the films, you know, they hold up. Even for 1993, this movie looks great. Like, it's a movie that would have been on, on Netflix, like, last year or something. And it's really well done. And I think it's a, a film you should check out. I would recommend this to any of you guys out there that have never seen Judgment Night. It's a Hopkins hidden gem, I must say. It's better than Nightmare on Elm Street 5, easily. Because uh, I don't blame Hopkins for that. That movie was rushed in production. It was badly written. He didn't write the movie and, and you know... I blame New, New Line for, you know, rushing it out. This is way better. This has tension. It's It's got some good moments with the cast. It's R-rated. It's fast-paced, and it has a lot of action throughout. And uh, some good fighting moments, you know, you know, with uh, Emilio Estevez. He shows how strong of an actor he is. I prefer him over Charlie Sheen. And, uh, yeah, the, ca the cast has good chemistry with each other. And there's some jokes here and there, but it's not. it doesn't overstay its welcome. I would have liked the female lead in this too, you know, with one of like the four guys and a girl, you know, to drive the, the the van or whatever. That would have been nice, but I could take what I'll get. And uh, the movie's well done. I'm glad I got to see it finally on cable. So, yeah, The Judgment Night is a good one. If you've never seen this from 1993 and you're old enough to see an R-rated movie, watch it. I bet on, they have it on Netflix. It's a it's definitely a flick to watch uh, with a group of friends. Get some popcorn, show your brain off, just, you know, have a good time. Don't listen to the critics that say this is forgettable or whatever. It's fun, and it's a well-done movie. I'm very surprised how good it was, considering it was, it cost $21 million. It cost that, not 120 just $21 million. It looks great. And there's people with budgets like 10 times that, that the movie looks terrible. Here, it's well done, so... I would, I would definitely recommend Judgment Night, the 1993 movie. If there's another movie called that, no. It's a Stephen Hopkins film from 93. Not If there was one from the 2000s, it's not the same movie. But it's a good film. So thanks, guys, for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next review. I'm tired, so see you guys later.